Good morning everybody and welcome to an Epcot day. Literally, we were so lucky again. We got boarding group free for Guardians of the Galaxy, which means we've got a nice early ride on Guardians of the Galaxy when we get over to Epcot, which is really exciting. I'm actually really looking forward to going to Epcot on this trip because we have so much to look forward to, like so many new things. I'm really looking forward to seeing the world celebration and see how that's all kind of developed because the last, well, since 2021, um, Epcot has actually been under like construction walls um, and you haven't really been able to see a lot of that middle section now all the malls are down and i think it's going to look absolutely beautiful we've also got journeys of water with moana we've got luminous yes epcot's got so many brand new things for us to go and see i'm very very excited for this like epcot trip it's going to be really really good so yeah we're going to make our way over there now it's very very warm already it's only eight yeah literally just turned eight o'clock and it is really really hot really really bright um it actually feels like a really hot august here like august is obviously always a hot time but out of all the times that I've visited, this is my fifth time. This feels the hottest by far. I'm not sure what it is. So we're gonna make our way over to the buses and go to Epcot. Well, that is a long line for Epcot this morning. Although there's another bus straight away. I actually have my Figment t-shirt on today. Absolutely love Figment. I can't wait to get back to Jones into the imagination as well. Thanks so much. And we've made it to the big giant meatball. It's Epcot. Experimental prototype community of tomorrow. And all the people that are waiting over here, these are non-hotel guests. They're just waiting to get in through this way over here. But yeah, we're gonna go and get a picture outside Spaceship Earth. Look how impressive it looks. Seeing the Spaceship Earth behind me fills me with so much joy and happiness. It literally is such an icon. I love it so much. It's literally the best. And I feel like Epcot is such a great park literally for everybody. Like, I know some people say Epcot is like an adult's park. I actually don't agree with that. Like, yes, you could go, you could drink around the world, you could drink as much as you want in Epcot. Like, I've seen so many drunk people in Epcot before. But I think it is something for everybody. Like, they have so many character meet and greets. This is the park for character meet and greets, actually. If you want to see lots and lots of characters, there's so many characters throughout all the different pavilions. And it's just a huge park. Like, you'll do so many steps in Epcot. But <sighs> it feels so good to be back here. There's the monorail. It's a really nice little wall over here. We've got a photo pass photographer. Really nice photo shot there. So the last time I was here, this was all construction walls and you literally couldn't see over any of this part. But this here is the new world celebration part. And it's all in this middle section, just to, like behind Spaceship Earth. And it's a really, really cute little atmosphere. I really like it, it's so quiet down here as well. We just found the Walt statue. It's actually a lot more hidden away than I thought it was gonna be. It is so cute. Like, look at this with the backdrop of Spaceship Earth behind. Absolutely stunning. And it actually says over here that this is Walt the Dreamer, dedicated to all who dream of a better tomorrow. That is literally so adorable. I absolutely love it. Definitely need a picture with Walt. They actually have a photo pass photographer just outside as well, which is great. And yeah, and then over on this side here, I absolutely love this quote here. Always be in a state of becoming Walt Disney. Literally stunning. I actually think as well, there's no other park that that's more fitting for. I like, absolutely love that. Obviously, I have the partner statue in Magic Kingdom, and that makes complete sense. But that one, I feel like that belongs in Epcot. That is literally the most beautiful little spot. And do you know what? We've come here straight away. Nobody's even over there. Like, we are literally the first guests to meet Walt. And I know sometimes they have, like, little extra magic touches where, like, next to you might be, like, a lightning lane or something like that. So they do that sometimes. I absolutely love the music as you walk through here as well. Like, this is literally the most perfect part of Epcot. It's so quiet, so peaceful. You can literally just stand here, sit down, have a little drink, and take in these absolute beautiful views of Spaceship Earth. Literally, my heart is so full right now of love. I love this. In this section here, it's so nice and cool, I'm absolutely loving this. You've got Connections, which is a Starbucks, and then on that side you have the Creation Shop, which is a, such a great souvenir shop, I love going in there. And you've also got Club Call, one of my absolute favorite freebies in Disney, love Club Call. We will go and pop in there later, but actually we've just been called for our boarding group for Guardians, so that's where we're gonna go and head over to right now. Group three was called literally instantly. We've got an hour to get onto the ride. There we go, it says, from our world to yours, the Star Blast is presented as a gift from the Nova Corps for the people of Terra. May it, like Epcot, serve to inspire peace through understanding. That's so cute. 
Here we go, let's go on to Guardians. You're fully ready, aren't you? Yeah. Got your Groot, got mm. Guardians of the Galaxy t-shirt. That's actually really nice, that t-shirt. Yeah, I like this one. It's really good. But yeah, you ready to come on? Yep. Best air conditioning in all of Disney. Wonders of Xander. Great as well, there's literally no queue whatsoever. Um, which is great when you get an early boarding group, you literally walk straight through to the ride. If you do get like a later boarding group, what I'd say is that you sometimes expect to wait like 30, 40 minutes for this. Um, but if you can get an early one, which I know is just potluck, it's really, really great. But um, I love this queue line so much. It's just walking straight through. So amazing. It's so sad as well that you're not able to go and ride this twice or more. Um, I feel like it's quite an old ride now. It shouldn't be on a virtual queue really. Um, but you know, we're still like that. The only way you can ride it twice is if you go and book a lightning lane as well. So you can book a lightning lane, pay for that, and then also get a boarding group. That's literally the only way you can do it. I'm actually hoping for September. That is the one. We was actually talking with my mum. And I'm saying, I don't think we've ever had Iran. I think I've never ever had that song. I'm not complaining. I'm not actually that fussed by that one. But I'd love a bit of September. Or Conga, to be fair. Oh, and this is the Star Blaster that you see at the front entrance. We always try to go and wait on the right hand side of this room because you're the first ones to get through onto the ride after the pre show. So always try to stand to the right side of the room. I am Nova Prime Irani Rayan. Commander of the Nova Corps. On behalf of all Xandarians, I hope you have enjoyed exploring the wonders of Xandar. So we decided to come to you. But even we could not have reached you so easily were it not for the cosmic generator. Someone needs to tell me when I'm on. Welcome. Epcot We're so close to it now. Not long. That free show is literally pure magic. Like, I can't actually show you that main part that happens, but literally breathtaking. I'm not going to give any spoilers away if you haven't been on the ride. But honestly, first time you see it, insane. What song are you hoping for? September, best one. It's time. Let's go on. Row one, front row. There we go, all secure at the front. We're going. And you're likely doomed. Yes. Going What we can get all the way. I think that's my least favourite song on Guardians actually. Like maybe it's, it's a song that doesn't really mean much to me. I don't even really know the song that well. Um, the other ones feel like more of like a party on there that didn't really feel like it. So a bit sad that we got Iran, but at the same time quite happy because I was saying earlier, never had that song. So I think we've had all of them now. We're just taking a little browse in the Wonders of Xander shop, which is like the gift shop at the end of the ride. It's a really cute shop actually, I really like this shop. I actually haven't got a Guardians pin. They've got this one here, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, but I actually really like this one here, this Xander. Other World Showcase. That's really cute, actually. I feel like that might be the one. Silver. Um, also, that Groot one's so nice as well. Get your Groot on. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, I do like the pins in here. I do need to get a Guardians pin badge. Did you enjoy your ride of Guardians, Jack? Yeah. Yeah, it was so good. It was a really, really good ride. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like an updated Space Mountain, like when you're inside. It's like really, really smooth. I just love being on Guardians. It's like the best. We actually have no test track today, which is really sad. Test track's like one of my absolute favorite rides here at Epcot. Um, but it's actually being completely reimagined for 2025. So I'm excited to see what it has to bring, what the future has in store for test track. I was actually feel really weird being in this area, not hearing the test track cars, like zooming around the track by like, every like couple of seconds. It does feel really, really odd. But um, 
yeah, I feel like it's the right thing to do. The test track is going to be great when it comes back in 2025, I'm sure. Although, what I'd love to do one day is actually go on to Radiant Springs in California because I think that's going to be such a great ride. Um, it's literally like the same sort of thing as test track, but the theming on there is like out of this world. So, yeah, that'd be really good to go to Radiant Springs in California one day. Just stepping into the land to go on to Soarin'. The land always really surprises me. It literally looks just like a shopping centre. But you've actually got three attractions here. So you've got Living With The Land and, sorry guys, I'm not one for Living With The Land. I will go on it, but it's just one that really, really does bore me. So it's not one of my favourites here at Epcot. You've also got Awesome Planet over there, which is like a uh, like movie. And then over there, you've got my favourite attraction, Soaring Around The World, which is what we're going to be heading on to now. We're going through to Concourse A. They actually did have this as Soaring Over California for a little while, which I would have loved to have seen. Um, it's back to Soaring Around the World, which um, is one of my absolute favourites. <laughs> Next, fasten your seatbelts, inserting them into the buckle on your right. Before takeoff. Here we go. So many of them flying theaters now. Like we've done it in New York, we've done it in Vegas, at Legoland Windsor, and you know what? Soaring is the best one. Like it is literally the best. I absolutely love going on Soaring. The smells, like everything. I'd love to know what the California, like, Soaring Over California ones like. But um, Soaring Around the World, honestly, one of my favourite Epcot attractions. I'd say right now, with what's open at Epcot, that is my number one. Just taking our very first steps into the World Showcase, and I feel like we're actually going to go and get something to eat for breakfast. And Epcot is like the best place for food because you literally have all the different pavilions that offer so many different varieties of food from different cultures and that kind of thing. So we're gonna go and grab something sweet for breakfast because if you know me, you know I love a sweet snack. And we are always the kind of people who go and head to Mexico first. Mexico is like the way to go. Um, I know obviously a lot of people go Canada way. To me, that's just wrong. Mexico it has to be. It's actually our first time in Epcot with no festival going on. This year they've decided to not do the food and wine festival until later in August, which is what they used to do, like going back years and years. And then after COVID, they seem to have it running throughout the whole summer, like from July. Um, but yeah, there's no food and wine festival until the 29th of August. So yeah, it's quite weird being here with no festival going on. Just gone and headed into Norway, which is actually such a cute area of Epcot. You've got Frozen Ever After over there. But we're actually gonna go into Kringla Bakery, which is home to the best school bread ever. I absolutely love this Norwegian bakery here. School bread is like the most famous thing, which is this thing here. It's like custard filled, dipped with 
the coconut. It's like absolutely amazing. They also got like the Norwegian Kringler. Jack and Sean have got this before. That's also really, really good. They do have lots of other options as well. Like the rice cream looks amazing. But yeah, honestly, this is like one of the best bakeries here. Oh, he's put the school bread in as a Mickey shape. And that looks really nice as well. Just look at how great all of this looks. And it's all freshly baked as well. Like, it's honestly amazing. And that rice pudding looks so amazing. Here it is, the school bread. It's actually quite heavy today. Right, let's go give it a try. I know I'm gonna love this. Mm. Such a good breakfast. And the custard is so cold as well. Like, I like that it's a cold snack but on a hot day. So good. But yeah, you can see there the custard that's in the middle. So nice. Why is that breakfast like the best breakfast ever? Like, honestly, that has really satisfied my taste buds right now. Literally the best. Like, if you're coming to Epcot, that is the breakfast to get. Like, 10 out of 10. I love the coldness of the custard. Like, I keep craving that even more. I want to go in again. I want to even get another Kringler Bakery because, literally, perfection. Just going into this walk-in attraction, Gods of the Vikings. That's the real Thor, there with his hammer. Mm -hmm. This one looks like a very scary man. Why is he looking down like that? That is pretty terrifying. You know, we always imagine Thor with like the big giant hammer. But in reality, we're just like this little guy here. Should have run Frozen Ever After. because they're not going to have the faces with the projections on. It's going to be like done properly, which is like really, really exciting. So it's going to be great when that comes to Disneyland Paris. We've been waiting for so long, but Disneyland Paris have finally said that 2026 is the year that it's coming to Disneyland Paris, but it's such a great ride. This Norway shop is actually really, really cute with lots of like winter clothing. Love these like sweaters that they've got. It's so like classic and you've got all your like Norway merch as well. With, like the Norway flag, Norge. Yeah, I really, really love that. I'm actually not sure why this started, but I always say that this looks like my dad, which is really, really bad. <laughs> it is looking so cloudy. So we've actually got our first lot of rain. So I'm actually gonna swap cameras quickly. So yeah, we've got the first of the Disney rain. I have to say though, it actually feels so good having this Disney rain right now. Yeah. Like it has been so intense to hit, so it's actually feeling really good to me. It's really windy. Absolutely loving it though. We've just come into the Mexico Pavilion just to escape the rain for a little tiny bit. I absolutely love this statue here, this everlasting love statue, which is just before you go into the main section in there. Oh, I love this pavilion so much. It's absolutely stunning. I forget how spacious it is in here as well. But you've actually got the Grand Fiesta Tour, which is just over there. So we're going to go and head on to that. It's a lovely little attraction, and you never really have to wait too long for it either. But um, yeah, this here is the Mexico Pavilion, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I actually uh, really love the whole Mexico theme and the shops that they have in here, like they're like little market stalls, that's what it looks like. And um, they do some really nice things. This white t-shirt here, I can actually see myself wearing this. That's so nice, with him drinking the tequila. These here are the Mexico pins, Mickey coming to Mexico with his suitcase. And I actually really like this one here with Donald and Bienvenidos. Literally my motto in life, fiesta, siesta, repeat. These here are the Mexico ears, you've got the three caballeros and the little guitar in the center really nice but these are actually quite expensive ears probably one of the most expensive ears that I've seen on property yeah. they are oh yeah the lounge fly that explains it how much are they 45 but oh, they are absolutely gorgeous there anything on the back oh yeah saludos amigos this here is such a gorgeous shop and Sean's got the little ukulele Go give it a play 
lovely. We've actually just got in line for the Grand Fiesta tour. The queue does look quite long to be fair, but um, it does move so quick for this one. One day I would love to eat in this restaurant. This is the restaurant in the Mexico Pavilion. It's absolutely gorgeous. It literally took less than five minutes and we are on. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen the film Free Cup of Arrows because honestly, probably one of the weirdest films that I've ever watched. Obviously it's a really like old classic Disney film, but it is seriously, seriously strange. So if you've ever watched it, let me know. I really, really like that ride. I'd love for them to change it into something Coco. Obviously that is a very, very like traditional Epcot attraction, but I would like them to do something like Coco related. A little bit like what they're doing in California, which they announced at the D23, that they're getting like a Coco boat ride, which will be really, really nice there. I actually can't believe just how grey it has gone right now. That like big cloud above us is definitely going to storm. It's saying it's going to storm until about 5 o'clock today, so we're going to get quite a lot. So yeah, I think today might be the first day of Disney ponchos, which right. is quite fun. Like, Disney rain is different to any other rain. Like, yes, when it rains here, it buckets it down, but... I love a bit of Disney rain. We've actually gone and we're going to go and head over to Spaceship Earth, I think, because we're not going to go any and do anything at the World Showcase because it's too much outdoor sort of thing. So we're going to go to Mission Space. And that's quite a long time indoors. It really is picking up. It's so windy. Oh, hear that. Oh. Well, the ponchos have finally made an appearance. Um, it's quite a big storm, actually, although I do think it is settling down a little bit. I actually love a Disney storm. Like, it is one of the, like, best things. Um, I'm actually full filming on my iPhone now, so you'll notice the quality has changed slightly, but, yeah, it's um, always great to have a Disney storm. And that's the thing, like, if you come here in August, or actually any hurricane season, expect this to be, like, a daily thing. And to be fair, it has changed, like, year on year when we come. Sometimes it's, like, a storm that lasts, like, two minutes, then it goes really, really hot again. Other times it lasts for quite a few hours, so it does really, really depend. But that's something that you've got to expect when you're coming here for hurricane season. And actually, if you go and check my vlogs that I done last year, um, I actually was here during a hurricane, and it actually meant that our Discovery Cove was cancelled. To be fair, if you're staying at Disney World, like it's one of the like safest places on Earth during a hurricane, so like don't worry too much about it. But yeah, just bear in mind that if you are coming here for hurricane season, which I think is all the way through until like November time, um, just expect that you know storms are going to happen, and it's something that you've got to get used to. The Bring Your Poncho, these ones are from Trespass, these are really really good, and we'll use these for our whole trip as well. You can actually still buy. Um, ponchos at Disney but they are quite pricey. I think everyone had the same idea going to Spaceship Her. This is so nice. So this is our one and here we go. Literally like 15 minutes of listening to Judy Dench's voice. Here we go. Right here we go. So touch where you live. It always confuses me that like the UK isn't in the middle and then I found out that that's all because um, it's literally where your time zone is. Like London, London, Look up at the camera, takes a great little picture of us. This is ancient Egypt. And then this here is Mr. Maths Guy. The reason we do maths at school. Oh, that burning Rome smell. Honestly, it's so good. You can get this as a candle as well. I think that's the painting the Sistine Chapel. I saw that when we was in Rome. It's so cool. Right, this is like the best part of the ride now. So, what are you most interested in? Leisure. Yeah, yeah I think leisure. Which sounds like more fun, undersea or outer space? Sink, outer space. Which type of person are you? I'm a planner. I plan Disney trips to a T. When on vacation, what do you worry about most? Oh, Daisy. I miss little Daisy. Here we go. Let's see what it comes up with today. 
Alright, here we go, let's see. Welcome to the future. Or should I say, your future. Here in your future, oh. you away on vacation. <laughs> Wait, we're not there. Oh no, what happened? Oh. Well, thank you, Phoenicians, for that lovely ride and for making me being able to read. Although, could have worked a bit harder on getting that face to work on. Um... Oh, is that sure? No, I don't think anyone's face works. Hopefully, your face would appear on here on where you selected, but nobody's on there, so obviously nobody's working. It is actually a really, really great ride. I do think they need to update the, like, your future part at the end because Sean actually was, the part that he'd picked, because like, he was on a different car to me, it actually was talking about, like, the fact that you can get, like, same-day delivery and things like that. And yeah. actually, like, we're already there. So I do feel like that last bit needs a little bit of an update because, obviously, Epcot is all about tomorrow as well. That's a big part of Epcot. And at the minute, you know, the, what they're talking about in some of them parts is already happening. Like, that's already, yeah, that's already here. So. So decide what you want in your future. Yeah, so yeah, parts of it does need to change. So we're just going and heading into Club Call. Club Call is completely free and it's a way of you going and being able to try different Coca-Cola products from around the world. So you've got Beverly from Italy. This one is like a bit of a hit or miss. People love it or hate it. You've got this Bonbon Anglaise from Madagascar, Dominican Republic, Korea, Philippines, China, Russia and Moldova. So we're actually going to go and give them all a try. I absolutely love that this is like for free in Epcot. Right, let's start off with some Beverly. It's worse the more I try it. Not me. It's so like bitter and a bit grapefruity. I just don't know. No. Bon Bon Anglais, the Madagascar one. I think that's my favourite one. That is so sweet and a bit tropical. I really, really like that. I actually love that Madagascar one so much that I've actually got myself a full cup of it. So good, it's so busy in here though today. I've never actually seen it this busy before. Just step in into the creation shop in Epcot, which is their like main gift shop here. And they do some really nice stuff in here. This shop is actually so nice. I look at this Epcot, I love that little sign. Epcot, World Discovery, World Celebration, World Showcase and World Nature. The different lands of Epcot. I think this whole collection is called Play in the Park. That's really, really nice. With like, I guess that's Pirates of the Caribbean. Really nice, they have like a whole collection going on though. Like the ears with all the different like attractions. And then the spirit jersey. I think it's not just for kids. I think they do have them in like different sizes as well. Oh, that's a nice shirt as well. It's a bit loud, but I do like that. Oh God, and this. Look at how cute he is. A little figment shoulder plushie. And I feel like with my figment t-shirt, he would literally look so perfect on my shoulder, but I'm not gonna get him. But he is so nice. Does he suit me? I've never seen anything like this before. It actually keeps your head really nice and warm actually. This man Paris, this might be the one to wear, but yeah, little figment hat. Such a nice photo album book. My mum always goes and prints out our photos. Um, I'm not sure how many this holds. I imagine it's probably about 100, but it's such a nice design at the front with the castle and the different parks. And yeah, it's two per page and you've got some space to write. It's $25 for this. I think that's really nice. Believe in yourself with the brand new Inside Out characters from Inside Out 2. These here are like the Epcot related pins. We really like that. These are the England ones. Fancy a cuppa, so traditional. The Mary Poppins. So nice. I actually really like this test track one as well. That's quite nice. Oh, and they've got a harmonious. I actually haven't got a harmonious pin, but um, that's not the show here anymore. It's actually been two shows since harmonious, so it's very well. They also have a lot of stock left of that. Absolutely loved harmonious. My favourite nighttime spectacular in Epcot. And actually, oh, the figment with the popcorn. That is so nice as well. I love that. I do think I'm actually going to go and get so many pins on this trip and lot, quite a lot of merch. We've already bought a few things already, so I will be doing a mini haul later on. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribing so you don't miss out on anything because um, I'm going to be buying quite a bit here. I've put quite a lot of money on my Revolut, so I'm ready to spend. It's definitely rude to be wearing figment clothes and not go on to journey into imagination with figment. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. It's actually looking pretty popular today, actually. It says only 10 minutes, but the line's outside, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Groot is coming with us. Oh, come on, go too! 
absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I could you go and taste. Chicken, can I go? Please, please, please. No. But you there got it wrong, Doc. I love it's his little swell. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. And each of us imagines different things. From just the sound, your mind has wings. And with you can see things differently. <laughs> I'd love to. This is not a good time. It Semen. You said it, Doc. Imagination is a blast. Literally right next to Figment, you've got the Disney and Pixar short film festival and it's only four minutes to the next show, so I'm gonna go and step in. We actually just managed to meet Chippendale, which we wasn't expecting. There was literally nobody in the queue whatsoever, so it was a bit of a rush. I didn't even get to film it, but we did get a photo, so I'll put that in over there. Really, really good meet and greet. Didn't even know there was meeting. They literally meet inside the uh, Disney and Pixar short film festival, so it's definitely worth going and checking it out. We're inside the theatre now, and yeah, it's just like you get to see some Disney shorts, some Pixar shorts. It's just a nice way to just sit down and like rest your legs for a little bit. That was actually really nice. I like that. There was actually three Disney or Pixar shorts that they showed and it was just a really, really nice just to sit in there, rest my legs for a little bit. But mum had a little nap as well while she was there. So yeah, it was actually really, really fun. And what it was, it was like 3D. So you had like your 3D glasses on and then the seats also like moved slightly like with the like motion. And I remember there was, there was Piper, there was Feast and then there was another like Mickey short that there was. It was really, really nice to actually go and do that. The rain actually got quite bad. So we've come to Katsu a grill which is in the Japan pavilion and they have a really really nice menu we actually come here for Christmas in 2021 and I actually really really enjoyed the meals see so yeah, they do lots of different like noodle and salad options and you'll see the prices are actually quite expensive for in here we've gone for the chicken cutlet curry that's $15.99 literally the same as like a chicken katsu curry that you'd get like a wasabi or wagamama's or something like that so that's what we ended up getting so that was $15.99 but we also went and grabbed the draft beer that they've got and you see one is slightly darker than the other. One is called Sapporo and one is called Kirin. Not too sure what the difference is apart from the colour. I'm going to go and do a little taste test but together like the beer itself was like $12 so actually it's quite an expensive meal altogether. Right I'm going to go and try the lighter one first and just see. Oh yeah that is nice. Yeah, it's quite light like the, the flavour and then this is the darker one. Let's see which one I prefer. I don't really taste the difference. Yeah, I can't really tell any difference to be fair. Both are actually really, really nice. I get a bit of everything, a bit of chicken. Mm. Oh, that's sauce is That is so good. I actually like love Japanese food. I love going to like Wagamama's and places like that, but this. So good. And the views of Epcot that you get. Really, really nice from in here as well. This is a really nice area of the Japan Pavilion. You have all the fish in the pond and that really cute waterfall. And I love that bridge that goes over as well. That makes a really good photo. And yeah, and we literally just ate in Katsura Grill, which is just up there. You know, it's a great meal as well when you have like that meal that really like satisfies your taste buds and it leaves that really nice flavour in your mouth. Like that's that meal all over. I'm so glad we went and we done it again because it's one of the best ones I think at Epcot. But um, the rain's actually stopped and looking at the weather app, I think that's it for the day now. Like we're not going to get any more rain. So it's actually been so much easier walking around with it being cooler. Like as much as like it's annoying when it does rain and it does storm, it's so much easier to just walk around these parks because actually when it's like the sun, it's just beaming down it can be really really hard and you have to take lots of breaks and stuff but today it's just felt really comfortable 
We're actually just chilling inside the American Adventure Pavilion, uh, waiting for the Voice of Liberty. It starts at 3.45, so we're here about like 20 minutes early. Um, but the Voice of Liberty are like, it's like a vocal performance. Honestly, it's so breathtaking. I saw it for the first time on my last trip. I feel, now that I've seen it once, it's something that I'm gonna have to keep going and seeing over and over again. Like it's one of the most breathtaking performances ever. They sing like Disney songs and it just gives you shivers when you're watching them. So I'll put in some clips of the Voice of Liberty, but they honestly are amazing. They do um, lots of shows throughout the day as well. If you look on the My Disney Experience app, it shows you all the different show times for them, but it's very regular throughout the day, but we're actually seeing the last one at 3.45. That was so amazing. We probably spent a good like 40 minutes in there. The show wasn't 40 minutes. We've, the show was probably only about like 10 minutes. They sung three songs. Um, but it's just so like, it, honestly, the tingles that go down my spine when I'm listening to them sing, they are literally breathtaking. Anything like that, that is a bit of me. I absolutely love that. It's very like theater, like kind of vocals. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it so much. Um, I could literally go there every single day on my Epcot trip and go and see every single show. And I think every single show is slightly different as well. They do sing different songs. We're just heading over to Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. It's currently on a 75 minute wait, so it's quite lengthy. You can see the line over there, it's quite long. Um, but this is actually the exact same ride as the one that's at Disneyland Paris, exactly like identical. Um, although I feel like this area does look like a lot more French than the Disneyland Paris, which I never thought I would be saying, but I really do love this area so much. The theming of all the shop windows as well. You've got here your olive verts, green olives. See, look at my Duolingo is paying off. Fountain, which is outside the ride. It actually looks so much better than the one at Disneyland Paris. The one at Disneyland Paris is now not water, it's just like grass that's in the middle, and it's just not the same effect whatsoever. I have the rat glasses on. That's actually one of the differences now. The one at Disneyland Paris is no longer 3D, it's a 2D ride, which I've not actually experienced yet. Oh, I've got our own little personal Remy. Okay, 
Okay, we've just gone and made our way over to Journey of Water, inspired by Moana. It's a brand new attraction here at Epcot. I've not done it before. When I was here last time, I actually saw all the construction walls were up, and they was having like cast member previews of it. But looking at the attraction, it looks absolutely beautiful, breathtaking. It's basically like an exploration trail. You walk through, it's self-guided, and you watch like the water around you come to life. That's how Disney put it. So, yeah, we're gonna go in. And I'll tell you what my first reviews are of it. But I'm looking forward to walking in. It looks very, very busy in there though. Um, but yeah, I want to get some like really nice shots of it. It's something that you might want to do, like daytime and nighttime as well. Oh wow, even like first impression straight away. That is so impressive. They actually have these little signs as well, so it's kind of like educational as well at the same time. You'll notice as well that you've actually got characters which are hidden in the rocks you've got there. Defeaty, which is in there. That is so amazing. The cast member actually just said that there's 12 hidden characters throughout, so obviously you've got to have your eyes peeled. I'll see which ones I can point out. And obviously there's little signs there just say, do not drink the water. Here is the stream section. As rain runs over the ground, trickles of water come together to make a new stream. Oh. You can see Maui is in the rock just there. Stand and wave to the stream in front of you. I actually have a dry path on that side, but we're gonna go through this bit, the wet path. I think it's just a little bit of wet flooring. Dry mum. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely so stunning. That is what I've been waiting for. That is so adorable. This is the lake section where all water is connected. This little lake is continually being refilled by water coming from different sources. such a good addition to Epcot that was so cute that is actually perfect for pretty much all ages but like if you've got little children they were like so immersed in that like it's such an immersive experience we was in there for a good like 15 minutes as well we're actually gonna go and walk through it again um, just to take it in because I feel like there's so much to take in there but that is such a great interactive experience what did you think Sean? It's good I like it. You like what's your favourite part? It's where you can like um Use your hand to push the water up. Yeah, I feel like we only actually really saw two of the characters in the rocks, but when we look for again, I'm sure we'll see some more. We've decided to go and get this river boat, which takes you over to the Morocco Pavilion to save our little legs a little bit. We've done a lot of walking today, so it's our first time ever doing this. Stepping on. It's actually pretty nice in here, actually. It's all indoor seating. There's like one seat outside. It's actually really quite spacious as well. You pick quite a lot of people on. Yeah, we've got our seats. The boats actually depart every 15 minutes, so um, I'm not sure how long it'll be. But we didn't even wait for that long either, so have a little look at where the boat is on the lagoon and just see how long we think it's going to be. But it definitely saves our little legs from walking around the World Showcase Lagoon. Oh, 
that was actually so easy doing that. Like, I'll definitely go and do that again. I think literally it took us maybe like two, three minutes and we was like through. So that's great. We're actually at Morocco now, which is where it lets us off. And I think we've only got like two pavilions down and then we'll be at the American Adventure on a bit of a mission because we are going to be today beating the dining plan. Like, it has to be done. So we've actually looked at the menu for Regal Eagle Smokehouse. And on Regal Eagle Smokehouse, they have quite expensive entrees and you've also got alcohol over there as well. So I think today is going to be the day we do beat the dining plan. So let's go over there. I'll show you what the menu's like. We've never eaten there before, but I've heard good things. Apparently it's one of the best quick serves here in Epcot. So the decor in here is so cute. It's like so homely as well. It's literally like... If I was American, I'd feel so proud to be American right now. I love the little banners that are on the top as well that go across in the American colours. But this is the menu. So I'm just on my Disney experience, which isn't a mobile order. But they do ribs, which is $16.49. Chicken, the Texas beef brisket sandwich, which looks, which looks really, really good. Um, the North Carolina chopped smoked pork butt platter. I'm not too sure what that is. But it comes with these two, the ribs and chicken come with cornbread. Uh, but the brisket doesn't come with anything. It comes with like a garlic toast. But you also get to pick a side. So you get to pick either baked beans, coleslaw, uh, seasoned French fries fries, onion rings or mac and cheese. So quite good selections for side there. We also have a speciality cocktail which is Tennessee lemonade. It's Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey, Minute Maid lemonade and peach. That's $16. That is really expensive but this is actually included on your quick service dining plan so I'm actually very very tempted by this. We've just seen the onion rings and they look honestly amazing. Um, but like, literally if you went and got the most expensive meal which is the ribs and that cocktail is coming up at $32.49 before tax. So that is a really, really good value meal. So I'll show you what I end up getting. They have like a sauce station in this quick service as well. So you've got like ketchup, this like classic smokehouse sauce, which sounds quite interesting. Brisket sauce, vinegar league, vinegar based sauce, sweet mustard sauce and ketchup, yeah. But I love a sauce station. Well, we have the goods. So we've got the brisket toasted sandwich. This looks amazing. It's like a garlic toast. And then there's actually quite a lot of brisket in there, which looks amazing. So they're not like shy on their portions. And then me and my mum actually went and split the chips and the macaroni cheese. So so got the best of both worlds when it comes to that. And this here was actually the most expensive meal. This actually comes with the cornbread, but you've got the ribs, which actually are quite big ribs, and also chips. That's the most expensive meal here. But I'm gonna go and start off with the Tennessee lemonade, which is the Jack Daniels, the Minute Maid, and the peach. And let's give this a try. Oh, that is really nice. Refreshing, quite boozy. I really like that. That is such a good cocktail. I'm glad that we can actually get this one as well. I don't know how expensive it is. Okay, and here is the brisket sandwich. Look at all that brisket in there. Let's go and give it a try. Mmm. Oh, there's such good quality meat in there as well. And also, that garlic is really coming through. It's like garlic bread toast. That is insane. So good. The mac and cheese is also real good as well. Really nice, proper creamy as well. It is weird how like mac and cheese in America just hits so different. Which is delicious, I love it. That food was so, so good. Like really, actually amazing. Like I'm so impressed with it. I'd actually go and eat there every single night that I'm at Epcot. That was literally amazing. I think like we all said the same. That cocktail though, it's a bit boozy. I literally can't even walk in a straight line. It was very, very boozy. Love the Jack Daniels in there. Really, really good. But yeah, we all actually said that that was like a 10 out of 10 meal. And I actually agree. Like it really, really was. We've got our viewing spot for Luminous, which is going to be on at nine o'clock. So we've got about an hour while waiting. But I always love to go to this spot here. This used to be the old Fast Pass Plus spot. Where if you had a Fast Pass Plus, you could come and stand here. We've always stood here for our Epcot shows. However, you can literally go and stand anywhere around the World Showcase Lagoon. I think by Mexico that's a really good spot over there and also by Japan that's a really nice spot over there as well if you can't get this spot here these here are like the brand new barges for the show so all of the fireworks get set off over here they are a bit of an eyesore but they do actually move this in and out so it's not there permanently all day 
I am actually so excited though for a brand new fireworks show here. This one has got lots of Disney music as well. My absolute favourite Epcot show was Harmonious. I feel like I don't really remember Illuminations too much. That was my first ever trip. Illuminations was a great show. I've rewatched it on YouTube lots of times. But I absolutely love, um, loved Harmonious. I wasn't a fan of Epcot forever. I feel like this is going to do... Epcot a lot of justice and I can't wait to actually go and see what they've done with it but yeah we've got a little bit of a while 30 minutes to go the pre-show has started and the flames are on it's absolutely stunning world showcase lagoon just before luminous begins She is looking so amazing tonight. Epcot at night is such a lovely vibe. And I love this whole new area as well at night time. But we're just walking back now, back to the bus. Good night, Epcot. Okay, I am back in the room and I'm all showered, off, sunned up. Jack and Sean went and refilled my refillable mug. So I've got that by my bed. So yeah, honestly, it's been a great day, but I'm absolutely knackered. We was actually at Epcot for the full day today. We didn't leave the park or anything like that. Luminous was a really great show. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved the music that was with it. I enjoyed the fireworks. Like Epcot always have some really, really impressive fireworks. I think it was like the perfect addition to Epcot. It was the sort of fireworks that it needed. And I'm glad that, you know, they've put that in rather than having something like Epcot forever again. I think it's going to be there for quite a few years, I can imagine. Um, really, really good. I didn't prefer it necessarily to Harmonious. I do like with Harmonious that it had the screens and it kind of told the story, whereas Luminous is obviously just music and fireworks, but you know, it was a really, really impressive show. And also, the food today was so good. Katsura Grill was amazing, and Regal Eagle Smokehouse was literally like the best meal that we've had on this trip. It's going to be hard to beat that. So, yeah, really good food at Epcot. Um, but I'm actually going to go and end this vlog here. So, thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow, and the next vlog that you see will be uh, Hollywood Studios. So make sure you're staying tuned for that. But if you've enjoyed it, then make sure you are hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you're leaving a lovely comment down below. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys real soon in the next one. Bye, guys.